Hello and welcome back to our channel, Kinterpon de Pippa. I am Alex and as normal I'm fixing something or other that's gone wrong. The gear linkage is packed up on the tractor and it wouldn't go in reverse so I've just spent the last couple of hours underneath here getting it working again so we can carry on and dig out the foundations for the, the milking parlour. Speaking of goats, let's pop up and go and see Molly. Hola, bon dia. <coughs> You've been visiting off the canal, Kinta to Ponta Pippa. <coughs> Hello, good morning, and welcome back to my channel, Kinta to Ponta Pippa. As you can tell, I have quite a few noisy goats that's around me, I do apologise. <coughs> so, this week is going to be a shorter video than normal, as we've had quite a lot of different occurrences on the farm this week. We've had tractor problems, we've had truck problems, and we've had goat problems. So here we have everything that we use to treat and to help the animals and this is what we keep in our goat fast day kit. So what we use pretty much daily isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, where should we start? Well here's a, a good general, this is a bag of vitamins that we buy. It's got a lot of micronutrients in it and everything else. Uh, selenium and other things to keep your goats healthy. I'd recommend that most people add to their feed with their animals, it doesn't matter whether they're being fed on the best land or everything like that. There's times of the year uh, where certain plants die off and their, their intake of certain minerals get reduced and in these warm Mediterranean countries a lot of the grasses that grow that provide the selenium for goats don't flourish very well in the hot months so you'll find that a lot of the summer months goats could well potentially be going out with their uh, intake of selenium that they would find naturally on the land. Selenium is included in, in this uh, and we'll talk about selenium again in a minute won't we with uh, uh, another uh, drug that we've got, well I call it a drug but another vitamin or a, an injection that we give them. So that's uh, it's, just a, it's just a powder form and we put it in a, in a tray and it's there for the goats, they know exactly when they need it and they just go and help themselves to it and the same with the bicarb. But we don't have that here because we buy it in 25 kilo bags and it's just a pain to get out of the freezer. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a, big, quite a big bag like that and that's left loose feed for them, they can go and help themselves for it. And that sort of brings us on to, to this Baycock, um, which is an in oral. oral given to the goats. There'll be a little clip we'll show you of Molly giving the little babies some of that. So what I'm going to be doing is giving them one milliliter of Baycock uh, five millilitres of electrolytes to each one of the babies. Give this a go. A bit more. One of the signs that your goat might have coccidiosis is diarrhoea in the bum and if you saw some of our goats in the last couple of videos you might have noticed some of them had slightly pooey bums. Not because we think we've got coccidiosis because I don't think we have at all. It's just that the little baby goats where we're building the shed got up on the inner wall here and helped themselves to all the bicarb uh, and you can imagine if you ate half a kilo of bicarbonate of soda you're going to get a bit of a funny bottom. Um, so, but we've given them all a dosing of this just to be on the safe side because it can be fatal. Yeah, 48 hours if your uh, animal's got coccidiosis and it'll be dead. So have this on hand. Although this isn't cheap, that was 48 euros, I believe, with a discount that we get at the uh, because we're a registered farm. We go to a proper vet supply centre, um, and that should have been how much was it you said? That would have been 57 euros and 40 something. Cents. So we got it for 47, 48 mm -hmm. euro. Another thing I'd like to say is to all the people that donate towards us and to the goats or who sponsor a goat, all the money that uh, we receive goes towards their feed and buying things like this because as you can see that's, that's not cheap and this only has a life uh, shelf life of six months I believe so by the time we'll probably get one more birthing babies whilst this is still in date and then we'd have to go and get another one so and you probably won't use it all by then so it's not super cheap and that is the smallest size container that they do yeah so 
And this here is what I use after I've milked the goat. So this is iodine. iodine and a dipping cup. You give it a little squeeze, you place their tit in here, you give it a little squeeze and it completely covers the teat in iodine which keeps any infections out and everything else. But, but first, before that, I wipe their boobs down with a warm cloth to make sure there's no dirt or baby teeth or saliva on their nipples just to make sure everything's clean before I start milking. Especially when the girls get mm. full of milk, their udders are becoming lower to the ground and they've literally just got to pick up dust and it'll plug up the, the teat and it can cause an infection, it's as simple as that. So, um, big box of hypodermic needles. Uh, we keep various thicknesses and sizes in stock. Um, you can just keep these in a in a in a pot because they come in their own sealed little little, little packets. Uh, and we have uh, disposable syringes that we buy and we throw away. And the reason we've got that is because this is in a little cooler bag. This is actually kept in the house. Um, Calamicina, um That's an antibiotic. When we first got the goats, they were really not in a um, in a very healthy state were they, the previous owner had literally fed them on dirt and rubbish um, and when we had the first few babies born, I'll put a link to one of the videos here, there's a little clip in there where you'll see the, it's absolutely, it makes my tummock, stomach turn to look at it, when the little babies were born with this selenium deficiency which is at certain, because this guy kept them in a compound they couldn't even forage the babies are born with a massive selenium deficiency and their legs bend like ours but when they're born their knees bend the opposite way their knees actually bend backwards and it it, oh, it's, it looks so wrong um, we got the correct I can't remember which one of these it is now for selenium that's vitamin B B complex I think it's this one isn't it? no this is iron Ferrovet so that's iron and it was this one Selbion, um, and that's injected. You can see I've got it there. It's an intermuscular, so I have to inject that into the muscle of the animal. And you'll see me with we call her Sexy Susie now, but when we got her, we called her Sick Susie. Um, in that video, I'm gonna, I've put the link up above. You can see she was so emaciated, I was actually struggling to find a muscle behind her shoulder to inject the poor little girl in. And then because she only had one patch of decent muscle to inject into. I had to keep injecting into that same spot for her for a week. So, but we injected the day old babies, and the effect of this stuff is almost instant. The following morning, oh. their legs were straight, they were working correctly, really quite incredible. Um, so selenium is extremely important in your uh, in your goat's diets. But that is also why we keep this bandage in my first aid kit in case to just help strengthen if it doesn't we react put, quick enough. We put like a splint on their leg, yeah. don't we? Like you would if you've broken your leg or something like that and it and it stops them over bending the joint the wrong way because mm. you can imagine once you've bent that you're bruising the joint and maybe they'll end up with a problem for the rest of their life but we'd like to sort of say that those goats are super super healthy now so I'm going to shut this up again because it's good to keep it cold hence why the mini pool bag yeah <laughs> especially in summer out here yeah. it gets very hot very very hot so that comes from the ho house that stays in a special fridge in the house permanently in the cold and when we need it we just bring it up the top um, now this here, I would like to, how would I put it, it's a farmer's best friend yeah. in a can. It's extremely good. Anything, nicks on the dog's feet. Any it's animal, anything. even you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> may, many of you might have seen this already. It's a, it's a blue coloured spray, uh, it's got antibiotics in it um, and it helps the, the wound actually heal up. I'm trying to read on here what the uh, what the contents is, but it's all in uh, all in Spanish. So, but this is an extremely good wound healer. It's not very cheap. I think that's about ten euros or something. It's not super cheap. In fact, I think 14. it's fourteen fourteen and a half euros. But it goes a long way. You don't need a lot, and you can actually fix some some quite nasty gouges in the skin with this. Uh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant stuff. The other thing we have is a um, can of fly spray that you would keep in your house and we'll spray that if you've got a wound there we'd cover it with blue and then we'd spray a ring of fly repellent or fly killer around the wound and it stops the in the heat when the flies get on a wound they can lay 
eggs in there and before you know it you can have maggots in a wound so you can actually spray this fly killer directly into the wound but I don't like doing that but we spray it around and it's often enough to keep the, to keep the flies away. And we had that issue with the sheep as well when yeah. we first had sheep, mm. you had issues like that. What the other use for this uh, blue product here or this iodine which we buy in large bottles like this because we use it quite a lot as soon as the babies are born and the umbilical cords are, are broken we give the umbilical cord a good squirt with uh, iodine and it will also stop any infections getting in through the umbilical tract into the, the young kid before it's had time to close over which is only a couple of hours but just when you've got more than a couple of goats to look after you just go on the safe side of everything we also have some wound powder if needed which we which never stops, use well we do i use it it's um <laughs> You can actually use uh, clean grey ash from your fireplace. Um, hello, Eddie. Would you like some? Oh, is it kisses for me? It just looks like talcum powder. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. It just looks like talc. And what it will do is it will stop bleeding. So if you're um, trimming the hooves and you cut a little bit too deep and they bleed, you can put some of this veterinary wound powder or you can put um, like I've just said clean grey fire ash on the wound and it and it stops the bleeding almost instantly it's brilliant stuff especially on little babies so they're tiny bodies they don't have a lot of blood in them they're always getting into mischief because they haven't learned what hurts them and what hasn't yet so uh, very very handy to, to have around okay. we've got in there marker this was left over from the sheep but it is very helpful when you have 101 of the same colour goat we've now got six black <coughs> baby goats and it is very difficult to differentiate the girl from the boy. So this is very helpful for that. Well, and I'd say that uh, we need to go and get the other, we've got another colour somewhere, but this one's green um, and we need to get a contrasting colour because this one doesn't mark up very well on the dark goats. It's very good for white goats or whatnot, but I need to get a red or something like that that's going to stand out. We have a thermometer. If oh yes. If anyone isn't feeling too great, oh matron, everyone should assume and know where that will be going. Yeah, well, normally in the backside, but yep. um, up there, bum. But uh, um, a thermometer is a very, very useful thing to have. We also have some salt for when I make up their electrolytes, and I will leave a recipe in the description for what I use for their electrolytes, which I add to their water. And electrolytes is just like sort of a Lucozade, an energy drink that we buy, you know, you buy all these drinks in the supermarkets, it's very similar when they get dehydrated and whatnot, so salt, a little bit of sugar, uh, some molasses and a couple of other ingredients, so it's very simple, very natural, but it really hydrates the animals extremely quickly, and we used to give that to our chickens. And last and but not least, uh, probably one of the... Uh, <laughs> the no. most undesirable things we've got as far as the boy goats are concerned on the farm is a castration tool. I don't know the correct no, it's name. It's a castration tool. We use rubber bands on the boys. So this tiny little rubber band here. You put it onto the, the tool here. You open it up. You put both of his little thingies in there and then you close it you pull the tool off and after about two weeks ten days his testicles drop off and it's a nice clean sealed wound it might sound a bit mean to do that but unfortunately if we don't do that the big buck will abuse them and he'll fight them whereas if they're weathers which means when they've been castrated he treats them as women and they get on very well so we can keep one or two of them as companions for him when we keep him separated. Once we're doing this, we um, we use the iodine again as like a lubricant, uh, which we place around his testicles before we place the band, and it helps the band slide on the skin, and obviously it keeps any infections whilst the, the wound is healing, whilst these are doing their job. Um, you can do it on the little goats. You might get a little ah! as you release it, and after that they're absolutely fine. They don't even know it's happened, so it's not what some people might think quite painful for the goat is it's not. Well I'm assuming it would just go numb because of the loss of blood circulation. Well sort of, yeah. Um, well that's just a little insight into some of the things we keep on the farm. Um, if there's anything else that we think of we'll probably add it into another video. Uh, better go and get this cool box back in the in the fridge and we'll put all this stuff back in the shed.
So last week we decided to clean out this big shed that we keep most of our tools and appliances in. And we now have a squatter. Um, we have a cat who's just decided to move in. We've been assuming we had a cat here for a while because the dogs just randomly bark at trees at night. So I assumed he had a cat. And he's decided to move in. We are going to need to take him to the vet and make sure he's not got a microchip or anything. Or we will contact the owners, obviously. If not, hopefully... Fat Fred can stay because I called him Fat Fred and he's currently having a nap. So yeah, we currently have a cat on the farm, so I'm hoping we will be able to keep Fred and introduce him into the house soon. So this is Fred. He's actually extremely friendly. So this week I have also been milking some of the mother goats as they have been favouriting one boob over the other. So I've been giving some milk to Fred and I've also been making some cheese today. I made some cheese last week which I... Ooh, I gave some to Luke and Sarah and Dad has obviously finished the last of the cheese that I've made. But Dad currently isn't here today on the farm. He has gone to Salabanco at IMT to sort out his driving licence and all of his paperwork there. And I'm here with that friend. So thank you guys so much for watching the channel this week and we will see you back here next week.